Minnesota's return to glory was drawn from a blueprint labeled defense. The heart of that defense was number 78, Captain Steve Midbow, a deserving winner of all Big Ten honors at defensive tackle. Number 97, Steve Stewart, a blitzing linebacker, was the team leader in both solo and total tackles. A three-time letter winner, Stewart made things happen. So did his linebacking sidekick, Michael Hunt, number 84. For Mark Merrill, number 88, pressuring the passer was his thing. It paid off in spades at Indiana, where Merrill intercepted and waltzed into the end zone for a touchdown. Minnesota has a history of developing standout defensive ends. And number five, Stan Sitzma, was cast from that mold. Sitzma, an all-academic junior, led the Gophers in tackles for losses. Another junior, number 65, Doug Freeberg, excelled at nose guard. The top tackler in the secondary was number 34, Keith Brown, a junior who earned his third letter at strong safety. Free safety, Keith Edwards, tied Mark Merrill for the team leadership in pass interceptions with three. A 3.39 average in biology made number 28, Bobby Weber, a two-time all-academic cornerback. Weber's versatility as a punt return specialist helped him win letters in each of his four seasons at Minnesota. More than 87,000 fans saw the Gophers face their first Big Ten opponent, Ohio State. The atmosphere at Columbus where they worship at the feet of Woody Hayes, is genuinely hostile. But the Buckeyes were destined to be tested by Coach Cal Stahl's young Minnesotans. For three quarters, a gutsy Golden Gopher defense pursued, harassed, tormented, and bedeviled the Bucks' brilliant quarterback, Rod Gerald. Ultimately, it was a tearaway jersey which tore the heart out of Minnesota. On third and long, Gerald's jersey remained in the grasp of Mark Merrill, but Gerald did not. He dashed to a first down on the key play of the game. Granted a reprieve, Gerald ran and passed Ohio State to a clear advantage. While Minnesota fell to the eventual co-champions of the Big Ten, it was the Gophers who executed the most electrifying play of the day. It featured Bobby Weber, the conference leader in kickoff returns, tying an NCAA record with a 100-yard run back for a touchdown. UCLA swaggered into Memorial Stadium, confident in its role as a two-touchdown favorite. The Bruins, strong contenders for the Pac-8 crown, were bushwhacked by a posse of gopher runners. Sophomore Jeff Thompson led the assault with 68 yards. Kent Kitzman, another sophomore, contributed 41 yards. 
Junior Steve Bro added 35 yards rushing. And snared a pair of Wendell Avery's passes for another 18 yards. From close range, Thompson punched across two touchdowns. Kicking specialist Paul Rogan booted two field goals to aid the Gopher cause. While the offense had UCLA reeling, the defense left the Bruins in ruins. It was a smothering gang of aroused Gophers which shut down the usually potent U-Clan running game. Remember, this was a team which just missed going to the Rose Bowl by losing to USC in the final seconds of its final game. The Minnesota defense was so intimidating that it caused UCLA to commit eight turnovers. The most costly of these errors helped Gopher captain Steve Midbow realize a lineman's dream. Steve recovered a loose ball in the end zone for a touchdown, and the delirium was spontaneous. Suddenly, the whole gang dropped in on Midbow to join in the jubilation. thought that Washington would become the Pac-8 and Rose Bowl champions. The Huskies did just that. But when they faced Minnesota, they met their match. The tenor of the battle was established on the opening kickoff which Keith Edwards returned 47 yards to the Washington 44. Freshman running back, Marion Barber, burst onto the scene by converting a busted play into an important first down. Jeff Thompson hammered into the end zone as Minnesota scored on its first possession. Washington was an explosive team, and the aerial combination of Warren Moon to Spider Gaines was one of the best in the nation. was the outstanding player in the Rose Bowl, sparked the Huskies to a 17-7 advantage. The persistent gopher offense began finding cracks in the Husky armor. Rogan's field goal cut the score to 17-10 at halftime. The Gopher defense assumed control in the third period. Stan Sitzma and Jim Ronan eclipsed Warren Moon. The Gophers had muzzled the Husky attack. The momentum became infectious. Wendell Avery located Jeff Anhorn at the Washington 11, and Minnesota had another opportunity. Paul Rogan made the most of it, and the Huskies' lead shrunk to 17-13. In the second half, Washington rushed for just two yards. Moon thought the sky had fallen on him, but it was Freeberg and Sitzma who were the stars of this war. Marion Barber gave the Gophers a big boost as he hustled through the Huskies for 34 yards. Washington was helpless against the precise place kicking of Paul Rogan, and now Minnesota trailed by just a single point. In the fourth quarter, Washington failed to make a first down. Brian Snyder's interception blunted the Huskies' deepest penetration. 
All that remained was for the offense to gain field goal position. Avery and Bailey helped do just that. With five seconds to play, Rogan did the rest. His fourth field goal of the day broke a Minnesota record and lifted the Gophers to a dramatic 19-17 victory over the Rose Bowl winners. For Minnesota, joy reigned supreme. For Washington, it was a long ride back to Seattle. The Control Data Corporation, a worldwide firm headquartered in Bloomington, Minnesota, is happy and proud to bring you this University of Minnesota documentary. Control Data believes everyone should be proud of the talented, dedicated athletes who participate in the sports programs which make living in this area so enjoyable. Amateur or professional, champions or not, these athletes deserve the gratitude and support of our entire community. Avery, number one, was Minnesota's top passer. He threw the Gophers' longest scoring pass of the year, a 39-yard shot to Elmer Bailey. Mark Carlson shared the quarterback position with Avery, and both were just sophomores. No matter who threw the passes, Jeff Anhorn was the Gophers' most available receiver. Anhorn's specialty, the down and out route. Elmer Bailey averaged almost 17 yards per reception, the Gophers' best. In the homecoming game against Northwestern, Mark Trestman, number 18, was Minnesota's starting quarterback. What he may have lacked in experience, Trestman compensated for with unbridled enthusiasm. Trestman's touchdown helped the Gophers ring Northwestern's bell in a happy homecoming victory. In 1977, three freshman running backs, Roy Artis, Gary White, and Marion Barber, earned their varsity M's. The youngest of this trio was number 41, Marion Barber, a 17-year-old, 6-foot, 2-inch, 200-pound phenom. Barber matured gracefully into the Minnesota offense, and by mid-season, it was apparent that he possessed the classic bloodlines of a thoroughbred. Swift, agile, and durable, Barber ran with a panache uncommon to his youth. He was the Gophers' second leading rusher, and his average gain per carry of four and a half yards was the team's best. What Coach Cal Stahl and his staff like most about Barber is he'll return to gold country for three more seasons. November 12th, at Memorial Stadium in Champaign, Illinois, football history was destined to be made. In the first half of this game, Minnesota fullback Kent Kitzman carried the ball 25 times for 114 yards. By normal standards, a good day's work. But for Kitzman, this was no ordinary day, as he turned the Illini upside down. In the second half, Kitzman continued his one-man blitz. Running behind the blocking of a determined offensive line, Kitzman never lost a single yard. He 
carried the ball an incredible 57 times to establish a Minnesota Big Ten and NCAA record. Kitzman gained 266 yards, tops in Gopher history, and he scored all three touchdowns in a total Minnesota victory. For Minnesota's seniors, the Wisconsin game meant their final appearance in the Brick House. It was a day of sentiment for Steve Stewart, Tom Luckemeyer, Michael Hunt, Desi Williamson, Mark Merrill, Mark Slater, and for the Gophers' most valuable player, Captain Steve Midbow, these men and others played a part of Minnesota's return to glory. Kitzman barged through the Badgers for 154 yards to become the Gophers' top rusher. Paul Rogan kicked two more field goals and was Minnesota's leading scorer. defense. It was a banner day for such underclassmen as sophomore Alan Blanchon and junior Jim Ronan. The seniors were not about to say goodbye without a parting salvo from the likes of Steve Stewart and from the defensive player of the day, number 88, Mark Merrill. Coup de Gras was administered by Marion Barber, whose snappy 31-yard surge left the Badgers empty-handed. The triumph completed a regular season 7-4 and four mark, and it merited for Minnesota its first postseason bowl bid since 1962. Birmingham, Alabama, the first Hall of Fame bowl game matched Minnesota against Maryland. It was an opportunity for the Gophers to grow accustomed to the glitter, hype, and hoopla which surrounds the postseason spectaculars. In addition, national television exposure placed the Golden Gophers among the elite of collegiate football. On their first possession, the Gophers moved smartly downfield with a very imaginative attack. Wendell Avery orchestrated a flawless drive, which culminated in a touchdown by Marion Barber and gave Minnesota the lead. Maryland was a bowl-wise team, playing in its fifth consecutive postseason game. The Terrapins capitalized on two costly fumbles and rallied to win the first Hall of Fame game. The Gophers had performed well, and simply getting to a bowl game was a giant stride forward in their return to glory. the major story of the 77 football season 
was written at Minnesota's Memorial Stadium when Michigan came to town, ranked number one in the nation, and a prohibited favorite to retain possession of the little brown jug. With quarterback Mark Carlson starting his first game, the Gophers took the opening kickoff and drove resolutely downfield. Passes to Anhorn. And Bro placed Minnesota in field goal range. Dependable Paul Rogan gave the underdog Gophers the upper hand. It quickly became clear that the supercharged Gophers were ready to play. Sitzma and Merrill clobbered Rick Leach, forcing a wild pitch out which Keith Brown recovered at the Michigan 12. On fourth down, Coach Cal Stahl disdained a sure field goal and opted to go for the jugular. Marion Barber got it as he slashed into the end zone. Minnesota led 10 to nothing, and Bo Schembechler stared in stunned disbelief. The Gophers unleashed a powerful ground game, which featured number nine, Gary White. And number 44, Kent Kitzman. Mark Carlson completed six of ten passes as the Gophers exercised ball control. Paul Rogan was successful on three field goals, and Minnesota's lead swelled to 16 to nothing. The crowd bordered on hysteria, while Shem Beckler's countenance remained incredulous. Rogan proved himself more than a non-combatant kicking specialist. He typified the fire and fervor with which the defense was imbued as he nailed Michigan's return man in his tracks. For Michigan, the menacing figure of number 84, Michael Hunt, was a haunting, immovable object. After this game, Hunt, with 15 tackles, was named National Defensive Player of the Week. Hunt shared the headlines with an emboldened defense, which limited Michigan to 80 net yards rushing, far below its average of 267 yards per game. The hitting was fierce. So intense was Minnesota's tackling that the Wolverines coughed up three fumbles. All were recovered by the Gophers, which did little to alter the rapidly deteriorating disposition of the irascible Bo Schembechler. With its ground attack muted, Michigan had to pass, and passing is not its game. Ken Foxworth fueled the Wolverines' frustration with an interception. Michigan could penetrate no further than the Minnesota 18. Keith Edwards picked off another pass to right Finney to the miracle in Minnesota. Some upsets are born from breaks or fluke plays. That was not the case in this game. Minnesota simply mauled Michigan, handing the proud Wolverines their first shutout in 113 games. Minnesota's 16 to nothing conquest of Michigan was the upset of the season. It was, in every sense, an inspired team victory and gave the Gophers the unique distinction of beating both of the Rose Bowl participants. The return of the Little Brown Jug to Gold Country heralded the arrival of Minnesota's return to glory.